What's up my YouTube homies? Matt with Bam Ranch. So I figured what I'd do today is maybe start a new series. Um, skills to survive life or life skills. I don't know. We'll figure out what to call it. But I want to take two skills per video. We'll start that out today. And there are things that as an adult you should know or should learn to figure out. And if you have kids or somebody else, you know, nephews, nieces, doesn't matter. You ought to be able to, you know, teach them how to do these things also. And there's a lot of skills that aren't necessarily a lot of fun, but they, they are important to know. And we'll go over some of those too. Maybe we'll do one fun one and one boring one. And today, what I figured we would do is, you know, basic maintenance both handyman type maintenance around your house or your homestead as well as um, mechanical maintenance you know maintaining your car fixing and repairing your car or truck uh, on into small engines and chainsaws and and that sort of thing uh, they're both maintenance but they both have two very different ways to approach them and and they really are two different complete skill sets. Carpenters aren't mechanics and mechanics aren't carpenters. And we need to have a, a pretty pretty good understanding of both if, if we ever intend on having any self-sufficiency. We'll move this back a little bit. I'm leaning over the bed of my truck here. So, anyway, let's get started. By the way, if you're new here, be sure and subscribe. And if you get any value out of this content, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. It really does help with the algorithm to push this content out to newer viewers and spread the good message. So, first of all, uh, with the maintenance thing, I forgot to mention, um, with the second one, we will do like a Microsoft Office, you know, or Google Docs, it doesn't matter, whichever, you know, form of that you choose to use it's all the same and uh, we'll do that on the second part of this video so I'm sorry camera's shaking around I'm leaning against the bed of my truck so maintenance um, home repair that sort of thing it's pretty important to know how to do this stuff that there, I don't even need to say that for everybody to know <clears throat> but I'm talking about things like water heaters, uh, plumbing issues. Can you fix a sink? Can you replace a toilet? Can you replace a sink or a vanity? You know, a, a $50 light fixture, a $60 faucet, and a $200 you know vanity and replacement sink in a bathroom makes an absolutely incredible difference. It raises the value of a house by thousands. You know, so learn learn how to do that kind of stuff. It's all easy to do. What about a water heater? Can you replace a water heater? Do you have the tools to be able to do that? You know, it's something that they go out. You know, it's a planned obsolescence of those. And being able to replace that or a garbage disposal. You knock a hole in the wall. Can you fix it and fix it right? You know, I don't expect you to be able to frame out an entire addition to your home. If you can awesome you know great you know but maybe you should at least possess the skills to be able to build a shed you know it's i'm not probably not going to be building sheds they're they're inexpensive to buy but being able to do so i guess i shouldn't say they're inexpensive to buy but to get something that's already pre-engineered you know, I'm not going to mess with building it. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be able to if we needed to. You know, building shelves, that kind of thing. Um, the the tools required to do this stuff are actually pretty minimal. Most of you probably have them. You know, basic homeowner's toolkit. You know, hammers, screwdrivers, you know, saws, levels, uh, pipe wrenches, channel locks, an assortment of pliers doesn't take a whole lot and you know YouTube the magic search engine can pretty much walk you through anything and you move on after you get past that to going to automotive and mechanical repair 
there's no reason any adult shouldn't be able to replace almost any thing under the hood of their their car or truck. You know, it can seem to be intimidating with some of the newer cars, but it's just not that difficult. Once again, YouTube, somebody has done a video on it somewhere. I just filmed a video of replacing, uh, fixing, helping my neighbors fix their car. These things seem intimidating, but they're really not that hard. It's not that hard to replace a sensor. It's not that hard to replace a water pump or a fan, you know, electric fan that went out or an alternator or start any number of these things. You know, we're talking basic stuff here. I don't expect you to rebuild a transmission. If you can, awesome. The, the, the pickup I'm leaning against right now, me and my daughter rebuilt the transmission, uh, what was it, year before last, last year? I don't know, it doesn't matter. But we built rebuilt that transmission in my garage, you know, and it's not that big of a deal as long as you've got something to follow along while you're doing it. Learn by doing this kind of stuff. The tools that you need for that, there's lots of specialty tools and you, you get into looking at, you know, tools to become a mechanic. Well, we're not necessarily trying to be mechanics. We just want to keep our stuff going. You know, a basic socket set from any hardware store will serve you just fine. You know, primarily you're going to be using occasionally an 8mm, but a 10mm, buy a bunch of those because they're always lost, 12mm, 13, 14, 15, and 16 millimeter. You could probably go on up to 19. You do see a lot of 19 millimeters, and 19 and three quarter are actually the same. And then from your, you know, standard or SAE stuff, you know, shoot for, you know, quarter inch on up to one inch. You know, if you want the full set, and the full set of the, uh, metric stuff would be probably six or eight millimeter on up to 22 millimeter. Uh, you'll need a set of sockets, just a basic set will do you fine. A uh, set of wrenches, basic set will do you fine. Uh, there are some that are better than others, but not that much better. Uh, Snap-on and Wright and Williams, you know, they've got little teeth inside the open end that actually does help a little bit but are you know do they really help you that much i think you know and i work on stuff a lot man i think i've actually needed that feature just a couple times you know so whatever they've got at home depot the husky brand or even the pittsburgh and pittsburgh pro pro brand from harbor freight they work just fine uh, you'll need a couple hammers, you know, ball peen hammers, maybe a dead blow hammer and a mini sledge. Um, channel locks, needle nose pliers, vice grips, mechanics picks are something that's overlooked, but all the little electrical clip connectors for the wiring harnesses, to be able to get in there and unclip that stuff or, you know, kind of dig out an O-ring to replace an O-ring. You know, they're, you know, a few dollars a piece, man. Just just buy some of them. Uh, basic screwdrivers. And beyond that, most of that stuff is just a specialty item. You don't need to go buy a socket for O2 sensors. I've got a socket for O2 sensors, and guess what? I don't use it. I just put a crescent wrench on it and be done with it. But if you need something that's a specialty tool, the point I'm getting at is, well, wait until you need that specialty tool and then go buy it. But anyway, this stuff is easy to do, you know, as long as you stay within your lane. And it's not that big a deal, regardless of how intimidating it is to work on newer cars. I've worked as a mechanic professionally, you know, and I've, I've done it my whole life. And don't believe what people say when they say you just can't work on new cars like you used to. I, <clears throat> I don't think they're necessarily any more difficult to work on than, you know, a 1973 Ford. It's just not that much difference. The, the, you know, the places you reach in are a little bit tighter, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. 
All right, now let's go to the uh, computer end of it, the Microsoft Office Suite. Whether you use that or Google Docs or, uh, you know, what is it, Li Li Libra or I don't know, whatever open source alternative there is. Yes, everybody understands the importance of being able to, to type up a document, you know, with like Microsoft Word. But the real, you know, thing that punches above its weight is Excel. And Excel is incredible at crunching numbers and keeping track of things. And the power of the spreadsheet, I don't think most people, if they work outside of an office environment, which I, I have worked in an office environment, I haven't done that in years, but if you're outside of an office environment, you don't realize how powerful of a tool Excel is. You want a magic computer program that will calculate your mortgage on a house that you're looking for that will include the how the uh, homeowner's insurance, will include the property taxes, and all of that you know other stuff that doesn't show up you know, interest rates and all of that under your typical, you know, online, you know, mortgage calculator thing. Just get, you know, sit down and build you a, a, a program where you can just change out the numbers and it'll boom, automatically spit out, you know, how much you're going to be looking to spend in each month. Another thing is, you know, building a pro forma, which is a projected, uh, a projected or expected financial statement for starting a business or for the next quarter, maybe the next 30 days, next year, next 10 years, doesn't matter. You do yourself a favor and learn about, you know, what a pro forma is. And you may never use it for starting a business, but where it comes in handy is, let's say you just bought, you know, a piece of property, you finally got your homestead. This is just an example. And it needs a lot of, you know, a lot of work done. You know, you, you, the, the dirt road leading up to the house is in major disrepair and it needs some fencing and there's got a bunch of trees that you need to haul off and it, it's got some land that needs to be brush hogged so you can clear it for pasture. And you get to looking at what it's going to cost for you to rent the equipment to do that yourself and, you know, I'm going to have to hire somebody to take care of the road, you know, a few times a year. And, and let's say your beginning cost for this piece of property, you've totaled it up, it's going to be $10,000. And then, you know, X number thousand dollars a year after that for maintenance, you know, just normal stuff. When you get to plug it in, you know, what a tractor costs, you know, for a compact tractor, and then you look at all these other things that you may want to do. Maybe you want to do you know, a food plot, you know, for hunting deer and you look at the other benefits like being able to clear snow off of your road and just all the little handy things, you know, that a tractor can do, you know, the number of hours that you'll be on it, put in your, your maintenance costs, you know, tire wear, you know, financing costs, all of that. You can plug that into an Excel spreadsheet and boom, it'll spit out a number. And you know what? before you know it after you know five years you're breaking even and then your money ahead after that you know and this is just a hypothetical thing it may take a little longer or may even work out faster than that but you know that'll let you know that hey it, you know it might be more beneficial for us to, us to buy you know this compact tractor or you know what the tractor will be ruined by the time we, you know, we're not planning on doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. We can pay a thousand bucks a year for somebody to come in and maintain the road. That's all we need done, you know. Budgeting, obviously, with Excel is, is a snap. Um, as preparedness people, you know, we put back a lot of stuff, right? We, 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 we stock items and... You know, for four people, how much toilet paper will I need for a year? How much food, you know, per person? And then be able to calculate that. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, be able to calculate that. 
And one thing to consider is it's not going to be just you and the people in your family if something really goes south. You're going to leave your, your, your sister or your brother or your aunt. You know, you're just going to leave them out in the cold. Well, no, you're not. You know, and this may be just a three or four day incident, you know, where the, the power has gone down due to a winter storm. You know, take a look at the Texas freeze that happened and, you know, to, to be able to look at your little spreadsheet that you put together. And, yeah, you know, you, you know you've got enough to cover, you know, four other people, family members. You may not need to cover them, but you can cover them for a week. You know, and if they don't need your help, well, then you know how, you know, your family of four, how long that will last you. But if that increases due to, you know, other family members that haven't prepared to, you know, eight or nine, you just plug in the numbers and, and you already know how much, you know, you're actually able to help. So anyway, I want you to do those things. Make that your homework of being able to to maintain and repair your home as well as your mechanical stuff you know lawnmowers four wheelers chainsaws car truck and then become the go-to guy of the people you know on how to run microsoft office suite but both you know microsoft word for doing documents and setting up outlines and tables and things like that as well as Excel, Microsoft Excel, and just be a spreadsheet master. You'd be surprised, you know, doing those things, how much that's going to improve your life. Well, anyway, be sure and hit the like button, you know, share the videos, and leave me some suggestions on the next thing that y'all might like to, you know, some ideas. And we'll just, we'll keep this series going as long as, you know, until I run out of ideas on it. This may be the last one. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, see you guys next time and y'all be safe.